Matthew 5, 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Well, what is a peacemaker? Those who make peace amongst others, not just peaceful fellows. Uh, they bring men into harmony with each other. How do we do that? Well, James 3, verses 13 through 18, tells us what ruins peace and then what brings about peace. It says, if you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. But the wisdom from above is, first of all, pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. So there are actions uh, and inward thoughts that ruin peace. Mainly, two are mentioned here in the passage in James. The first one that's mentioned is jealousy. Being jealous of somebody else, whether it's jealous of their uh, natural abilities, of their situation in life, of their material things, uh, of, uh, of respect they're shown, whatever it is, uh, jealousy is, brings about discord. It, it ruins peace. Another action that ruins peace is selfish ambition. There are a lot of people, probably all of us at times, that, uh, uh, that have ambition, which isn't ambition in and of itself is not a bad thing, but if my ambition brings about ruin for somebody else, that would be selfish ambition. Uh, if I'm not concerned with, with how anything else affects anybody else, but only myself or, or my family, then that would be selfish ambition, and that selfish ambition will bring about disunity, it'll bring about discord, it'll bring strife and, and anger and resentment. So there are actions that bring about peace. A peaceful person and a peace-loving person and, and one who, who uh, is a peacemaker, whether it's a peacemaker between uh, two different people or a peacemaker between themselves and someone else, there's actions that bring about that peace. First of all, they're pure. They, they do what they do without bad intentions and without manipulation. Their actions are because they love peace, and because they love peace, they seek about to bring about peace. They're gentle, even when they correct others, and sometimes that's what it takes for peace to, to come about, is that they are gentle in doing it. They're not harsh, they're not, they're not um, mean, although sometimes they may be accused of being mean, uh, but, but they're being gentle in how they go about it. They say the truth, uh, but they, they say it in a way that is as gentle as possible. An action that brings peace is, uh, is when you have the uh, desire to yield to other people's desires and interests. can't always be about what I want. A peaceful person or a peace-loving person or one who brings about peace, uh, they're concerned about the desires of others, and they look out for others' interests. A peaceful person or a, a peacemaker they love opportunities to show mercy. And also, they're fair. You can't be a, a person who brings about peace among two other people. Uh, if, if one's your friend and, and you're uh, doing what you do for their favor, for their benefit, and being unfair to somebody else. Uh, but a, a peacemaker is one who treats people fairly. And it's a great result when you seek peace, when you are a peacemaker. The result of, of people being in peace with one another is righteous living. When people are, are uh, treating each other fairly and are in harmony with one another, uh, that takes away a lot of, of hurdles uh, for righteous living. In fact, it encourages righteous living. So why are peacemakers so fortunate? Well, in this passage in Matthew 5, 9, Jesus says they are called the children of God. That is a fortunate thing. You are blessed to be able to be called a child of God. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. 
So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. So now we call him Abba Father, which is, is calling him Dad. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. So the benefit of being called a child of God is having the opportunity or the privilege of not just this formal father relationship with God, him as father and me as his children, but as a, a child would look to his, his father and, and call him dad. There's a, there's a connection, there's a relationship, there's a tenderness in that. And being an heir with Christ of the Father means that we are heirs of God's glory. In the present, there will be suffering, but in the future, to, to be in the glory of God and to share in that. Fortunate are those who bring about peace. What will the kingdom be like? The kingdom will be filled with people who experience peace with God because of what Christ did when he died on the cross for our sins bringing us from being the enemy of God to being his child adopted by him. And it also be fulfilled with people who desire to have peace with one another uh, because our father sought peace between us and Christ seeks peace between us and the father. Can't wait. Let's pray. Heavenly father, thank you for doing everything necessary to bring about peace between us and you. That your son Christ died on the cross and that you are satisfied. And it's his name we pray. Amen.